Shanghai Capella, known as the Chapella Network Upgrade, is proposed for April 2023. Shanghai is the execution layer upgrade where Capella will upgrade the consensus layer of the Ethereum blockchain. The key highlight of the Chapella upgrade is the activation of staked ETH withdrawals. Hey everyone! Welcome to Ether World. In this video, we will discuss Validator and its life cycle Types of withdrawals EIP4895 and EIP4736 How to make your validator ready for withdrawal The Chapella hard fork will allow validators to withdraw the rewards earned since the day of the Beacon Chain launch on December 1, 2020. A validator can choose to withdraw full or partial ETH reward, exit, or continue being the validator for new blocks on the Ethereum blockchain. To learn more about validators and how to become a validator on the Ethereum blockchain, check out our YouTube short, What is a Validator? Moving on to Ethereum's validator lifecycle. At any point in time, a validator may be in one of the following states. Let's discuss them one by one. Deposited. After depositing 32 ETH in the deposit contract, a user is registered to become a validator and joins the activation queue. In the activation queue, the deposit validation is completed after one epoch and the validator is eligible to be activated. Activated. A validator is generally activated after four epochs. At each epoch, the active validator will now be assigned duties to attest, propose a block, and earn rewards. Slashed. If a validator misbehaves, that is, double voting or surround voting, then other validators may perform a slashing operation to detect it on-chain, and the guilty validator may get slashed. Once the validator gets slashed, it will be forced to initiate the exit. Exited. Exit state may be triggered in one or more of the below circumstances. Case A, slashing, malicious acts may lead to the slashing of the validator, which leads to exit from the chain. Case B, insufficient funds, if a validator gets penalized for bad behavior like going offline for a long time, it will lose a portion of its balance. If the remaining balance is below the requirement of 16 ETH, this validator is forcefully exited. Voluntarily, if a validator is active, hasn't exited yet, and has served for a sufficient time, they can opt in to stop their duties at any time. The request will be verified with the validator's signature. The validator will then be assigned two epochs, one for exit from its active duties, exit epoch, and another for subsequent withdrawal, withdrawable epoch. Withdrawable. Unslashed and voluntarily exited validators need to wait for two to the power of eight epochs approximately 27 hours to become withdrawable. If you want to further dive deeper, check out our blog post on EtherWorld. Now, we'll take a look at the options available for ETH withdrawal. There are two types of withdrawals. 1. Partial withdrawals. In this case, an Ethereum staker may request withdrawal of earned rewards, maintaining the required minimum ETH balance in the wallet. While the staker may enjoy the reward, it will also continue with active duties of block proposing an attestation as a validator. 2. Full withdrawals. With full withdrawal, a validator will exit the Ethereum blockchain with collecting the entire balance of 32 ETH plus any rewards earned. In the next section, let's take a quick look into the proposal that is responsible for activating withdrawal with the Chapella upgrade. EIP4895, Beacon Chain Push Withdrawals as Operations will introduce a system-level operation to support validator withdrawals that are pushed from the consensus layer formerly known as Beacon Chain to the EVM or the execution layer. Users cannot cancel their withdrawal request that is in the queue. This is a one-time irreversible process. EIP4895 defines a new payload-level object called a withdrawal that describes withdrawals that have been validated at the consensus layer. The execution payload gains a new field for the withdrawals which is an RLP list of withdrawal data. The execution payload header is extended with a new field containing the 32-byte root of the tree committing to the list of withdrawals provided in a given execution payload. Assuming the execution payload is well formatted, the execution client has an additional payload validation to ensure that the withdrawals underscore root matches the expected value given the list in the payload. State Transition The withdrawals in an execution payload are processed after any user-level transactions are applied. 
For each withdrawal in the list of execution underscore payload dot withdrawals, the implementation increases the balance of the address specified by the amount given. It is worth noting that the amount is given in units of GUI so a conversion to units of way must be performed when working with account balances in the execution state. This balance change is unconditional and must not fail. This operation has no associated gas costs. How to make your validator ready? Let's switch gears to follow how as a validator you can prepare yourself. Every validator has withdrawal credentials which was provided at the time of making deposit. Remember the validator life cycle? The first two bytes of this credential are known as the withdrawal prefix. This value is currently either 0x00 or 0x01. Some of the validators since the time of Beacon Chain Genesis may have wallets with withdrawal credential prefix as 0x00. Validators with 0x00 withdrawal credentials will not immediately be able to withdraw. These validators must migrate to 0x01 when they are ready to collect their unlocked funds. This migration is a one-time process, so please do it with caution. If you aren't sure if your withdrawal wallet needs migration, you can check it using the Ethdo tool. Validators have to use the following command. This will output a withdrawal credentials field, beginning with 0x00 or 0x01. For validators who want to migrate from 0x00 credential to 0x01, they should follow BLS to execution with Ethdo guide by Barnabas Busa. EIP 4736, Consensus Layer Withdrawal Protection, CLWP. Validators are human, and they can make mistakes. If the consensus layer mnemonic phrase is compromised, the consensus layer can't differentiate the legitimate holder of the key from an illegitimate holder. All legitimate mnemonic phrase holders were originally in control of the execution layer deposit address. It is possible that some of the early adopters may have lost the seed phrase, and the execution layer deposit address is no longer under the control of the legitimate holder of the withdrawal private key. Please note setting a withdrawal address to an execution layer address was not supported by the F2.0 deposit CLI until version 1.1.1 on March 23, 2021, leaving early adopters wishing they could force set their execution layer address earlier. EIP 4736, CLWP, an interface proposal, provides purely optional additional protection. It aims to request nodes set a priority on withdrawal credential claims that favor a verifiable execution layer deposit address in the event of two conflicting set withdrawal credentials. It proposes to establish a list of set withdrawal address sign messages to help broadcast as soon as possible when the network supports it and encourage client teams to help use these lists to honor filter and prioritize accepting requests by REST and transmitting them via P2P. Without changing consensus, it may help prevent propagating an attack where a withdrawal key has been knowingly or unknowingly compromised. Check more about CLWP here. Chappella Testnet is currently on testnet phase. It moved on Sepolia on February 28th, followed by Goerli Testnet on March 14th. It is expected on the Ethereum mainnet on April 12th at 10.27 and 35 seconds p.m. Universal Time Coordinated. Thanks for watching. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe for more informative content. See you in the next video. Subscribe Etherworld YouTube and website for easy to learn Ethereum blockchain concepts. Appreciate your support.